Hey guys, welcome to QS. Uh, my name is Ellie, also known as Tone Shifters. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make hardstyle leads using Cubase and only Cubase plugins, everything inside the box. So let's get started. The idea behind it is that you have two types of leads. You have the, the, the super source, usually either a hyper saw or a multi saw or a super saw kind of sound which is uh, heavily detuned. And then you have uh, the other lead, which is more the character, uh, which is more tonal. Um, because when you, de when you detune the lead, it becomes a little bit dissonant. So you lose some of the tone. So sometimes when you combine the, the, the detuned leads together with a, with a character lead, um, then you can have this nice balance and a solid sounding lead. If we have a look over here, uh, to Retrolog. Uh, it's Steinberg's own synth. It's in the box. So when you buy Cubase, you also get uh, Retrolog 2. I can show you this lead in particular, which I've created, which is kind of very typical of a hardstyle lead. If I just play something. I mean, it sounds pretty good, to be honest with you. And then if you want to Listen to something, uh, I mean, the character leads are never always going to be the same. Everyone has their own style and own way of doing things. This is a character lead that I've created, which is kind of signature to my uh, tone shifter sound. It needs to be simple so that, that tone of the lead can shine through. Because sometimes if you have too much super saws, hyper saws, it just becomes uh, too cluttered in the mix. So it's, you need something that's going to cut through and give you that tone. So let's look at how I've made this uh, lead. So if I turn all the, I mean, this is the oscillator section over here. Um, and you have three oscillators, a sub oscillator, and also a noise generator. It generates uh, white noise, pink noise. And you also have a ring modulation uh, generator over here. And what the ring modulator does um, is it takes the signal from two oscillators, two corresponding oscillators, you can select which ones, and it combines them and then it routes them back into the mix. And you can adjust how much of the ring mod. And it creates this kind of, this buzzy, jittery effect, you know? But let's zero everything. Uh, let me just make sure I have a, a B section here so we can flip back and forth. So I'll turn down the ring modulation. I'll turn down oscillator three. I'll turn down oscillator two. And we'll start with oscillator number one. And if I just play, this one, you can hear it's just a multi uh, saw. They, they have this multi fit uh, function over here, which allows you to have eight voices per oscillator. If I put it to single, so you hear what a, just a standard saw wave sounds like. So this is the standard saw sound. The concept is you want a, a multi-voice saw. So whether that's a super saw or a hyper saw or whatever, you want multi-voices of the saw. So we're gonna go to the multi section over here. As you can see, it still sounds like a single saw sound. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna increase the, the number of voices to like eight. Doesn't sound too great, but that's because we haven't detuned them yet. So we're gonna detune them now. So instantly you get this, you get this like uh, Euro dancey, uh, old school uh, trance kind of vibe. The next thing is you want to make this sound thicker. So what do you do? You're gonna you're gonna bring in the next saw wave. So if I take this back to original uh, saw wave over here. By the way, this is how you turn them on. You just click it, and they turn on and off. So we want oscillator two now. We're gonna turn up oscillator two. I mean, over here, I had it down, you know, I was uh, tuning it so that it detunes even more, but I'll get to that in a second. So the next thing we're gonna add the second oscillator in. If we just hear the second oscillator, it's just a saw wave as well. So we're gonna open up the second oscillator now over here, and we're gonna turn that also to multi, and it's gonna be, if you wanna hear it again.
you can hear how the sound gets uh, much thicker uh, as soon as you start to add the voices in. Of course, the detuning is already there at 12, at 12 cents, but yeah, normally if you take it away, it sounds like how the first oscillator did. So if we turn that back to 12 cents, I found 12 cents was kind of uh, a nice even ground. It's not too detuned, but also it's not too simple. So then, okay, it's cool, but I still want some more detuning. So then I can add the third oscillator in with some more uh, multis. I'm not gonna repeat the process because it's basically the same process. Um, but if you wanna detune it even more now, so you can grab the global tuning of oscillator two and we can take it down, let's say, I don't know, let's say minus 30 cents. And then we can do the same for oscillator three. We can take it up. 30 cents. So then we have an even balance of detuning. We have a we have a good balance in the negative and a good balance in the positive. If you kind of work it out, you're not detuning by a full semitone, you're just detuning by a little bit, you know, like 30 cents. I forgot to turn off the oscillator three here. That's sounding thicker now with the oscillator three in there. Perfect. Next, we will turn on the ring modulator over here and then if I turn it to maximum so you can hear the effect, I mean, at the moment, like I said previously, the ring modulator needs two oscillators to combine those signals and, and put it back in for the ring modulator effect to work. So uh, in this case, it's using oscillator one, which is over here, and oscillator two. We can put oscillator three or the sub and it'll give a slightly different sound or, or an effect. But if we listen to it now, you can see it's got this buzzing crispiness that comes through. But obviously it's a little bit too much. We don't want 100%, we want like 30 or let's say 35%. I think that's sounding, starting to sound uh, a lot better. The next thing you wanna do is uh, the filter envelope. And what I mean by the envelope, if I turn the envelope off completely, just let's put it on zero. You can hear when I play the note, you don't hear the definition or the transient of the actual notes. When you put the envelope on, you can see the transient comes through and that's where you have to use the envelope over here to determine how much you want the filter to stay open when you press the trigger. It's a little confusing at first. If you look at this section here, ADSR, that's your attack, decay, sustain, and release. So your attack means basically when you press your uh, your key, how long before whatever you're assigning to the filter reacts. So you can have it so that it's... See how it's starting later? It's going right, the, the filter's opening a little bit later. Whereas if you have the attack down all the way, it's gonna as soon as you press the key, it's going to be open and then closing from that point. Then you have your decay, which is going to be what happens after you press the key. So if I press the key over here, the shorter it goes, the smaller the amount that it, the filter stays open. So we want it somewhere around here. And then the sustain is how long you sustain the note. That determines how much the filter stays open or how much it closes over your duration of pressing the key. And then the release basically is just when you let go of the key, what happens afterwards. In an amp envelope, to give you an example, if I was to open the filter completely, if I put my release to like a lot, <laughs> you can see when I let go, it continues to play the note and that slowly diminishes over 2,400 milliseconds. So you can make that shorter, roughly there. That was just to give you an idea of what the release does. Anyway, let's go back to the filter. Let's take it down. Normally in a synth, you have to assign your envelope, which is this, to your filter so that you can do it, but in in our case, in the Retrolog 2, uh, it's already assigned here with this. So uh, this is just the uh, the percentage amount. We just want a little bit. So yeah, I kind of think it's sounding nice. 
what I like to do normally, I mean, when I'm in the writing process, it's it's really, um, it's, it's nice to have this mod wheel function opening and closing the cutoff. Because sometimes you have a certain vibe with the cutoff close and sometimes you have a certain vibe with the cutoff open. It's more of a creative thing. It's not necessary, but what I like to do is um, this is the matrix here. You can assign things to other things so that you can have uh, control or if you want to assign LFOs to something completely, you, you, you can do so many cool things with the matrix. In this case, I've used it for a very simple reason. I just want to use this mod wheel as my cutoff. So I turn, I put on the, the mod wheel there, that's the source, and then the destination is the cutoff. And then I'm just gonna increase that a little bit. Then, then you can see I'm using my mod wheel over here. And that's basically controlling my, my cutoff. You can see the cutoff's not moving because it's doing it in the back end. So I would just set it over here where I want it. I'll just play with the settings until I'm happy with that. I think I'm just going to take it to maximum. I'm going to put the envelope roughly, yeah, 60%. Gonna close over that filter. All right. I think that's sounding pretty cool. So the next thing would be to add some reverb. Um, I'm using the, the, the reverb inside Retrolog. This is the mix function over here. Uh, I've got it to how I liked it, and I just the room size to maximum to give the the effect of you know you're inside a huge hall or something. Just gives you a sense of depth. There's a little bit of chorusing here, but I might just turn it off. It's not it's not really necessary, um, and it's very subtle. And the pre delay is on zero. So then we can add some delays. Just a simple one to fourth delay. If I turn off the reverb, so you can have a closer listen. And it's doing a ping pong feedback over here. I'll turn the reverb back on. And now one of the most important parts of making your lead is actually the EQ of your lead. EQing your lead is so important because you can have actually one of the best sounding leads for something, but if it's not EQ'd right, it's not gonna sound good. It's not gonna fit well in your mix. In my case, I've got four EQ bands over here. I've got a, a high shelf over here, a low shelf, and two uh, bell peaks in the middle. I've got a, a little bit of a shelf over here doing a, a 4 dB gain um, from 2K, 2.5K onwards. So if you hear, you know, it, it adds a little bit of brightness to the sound. Then this is boosting a little bit of um, the high high mids, so it's like um, you know f almost five to six k roughly, um, and it's only going up by two and a half dB. And then this one is sucking some frequencies out; it's just ducking some frequencies, uh, and that's roughly around the low mids, which is around three hundred and fifty hertz. Um, and then the last band was also removing some of those low frequencies that we don't need, uh, which is, you know, like I'm doing at 87 hertz. I mean, I could go up to like 100 hertz here and then just I'm taking it down as much as possible, minus 12, because we don't need those low frequencies. And, you know, we want to keep the mix as clean as possible. If we don't need those frequencies, we cut them out. So there are the EQ settings I've set for this one. Um, if I'm to have a play... I think it's a pretty good sounding synth and that's kind of the main hard style lead done. So let's look at the character lead. So if we look here, as you can see, we're only using one oscillator of the three. Uh, we're also not using the sub oscillator, neither the noise or the ring modulator. Uh, I can turn that one off. And the idea with this particular sound, if I play it for you, you assign an LFO to the pitch of oscillator one. 
And what that does is it modulates the actual saw wave with whatever uh, waveform that you, you can select here. And if I put the, the sine wave, you hear this, it's like a constant sound. But I like to personally have the randomized version. I think it's, I think it's white noise and it's, it just triggers it via noise. It's just random, you know, and it sounds a little bit more, a um, bit more natural. But if you go to the sign again, you hear the If I change the frequency, you will hear what I mean. Whoa, 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 whoa. Every kind of waveform has its certain characteristics. But for this particular lead, I like to use the noise function, which is, it's gonna be random and it's gonna feel a little bit more natural. How you assign it, you know, when we were talking about the filter before, um, in this particular synth, the filter was already assigned to the envelope over here. But if I wanna assign the LFO to the oscillator, I need to, I need to assign that. You know, and, and the only way you can do that is in the matrix. So if I go here to this matrix, uh, we have four pages of things that you can do in the matrix. Over here, I've added the LFO one, which is this one here that we're using, and I'm sending it to the oscillator one pitch. And as you can see, it's a very subtle amount. It's 0.5. And if I take it to zero, let's see what it sounds like. Just sounds like a like a filtered distorted saw wave <laughs> basically but when you have a little just a little bit in there it starts to create this mod modulation in the sound which creates a lot of character now let's kind of zero this for now let's uh, take off all the um, all the stuff in the matrix uh, and let's open up the filter oh, let's take off the distortion uh, actually the effect sends are the exact same as the effect sends in the multi saw um, these are like a, my standard settings that I always have on my leads every synth is a little bit different so uh, my EQ will be a little bit different on each synth that I use for Retrolog, these are kind of my EQ settings. And uh, yeah, using the same delay and reverb as the, the saw lead. You always find a recurring pattern in hardstyle, which is when it comes to designing sounds, it's always got to do with filtering that sound, so EQing, and distortion. And what you find is when you filter things down and then you distort them and then you EQ them or you put an EQ before the distortion, you end up creating different harmonics and different characters to the sound. So with this particular sound, the saw wave is kind of, it's simple, it's boring. So let's say we filter it down. It's already being sent to the filter envelope over here. We have it on about 45%. Um, normally you want to turn the resonance up to create some character. The resonance is basically just the peak of the filter. So now if I uh, take this to say 50%, you can start to hear that resonant frequency coming through. So when I move the filter, you can hear the resonant uh, frequency moving around. So if, if I put it to maximum, you actually hear like it's a bit too much. It's almost starting to sound like an acid, um, like an acid 303 sound. But we don't want that. We just want it to be like 50%. Then the next step is to distort this sound. And then you can see it's already, cre it's already creating textures and, and, and harmonics in the sound. It's creating movement, so it's keeping the sound interesting. Then from here, we're gonna add a little bit more modulation to the sound. So, like I was explaining before about the LFO, I'm just gonna add that in now. I keep scrolling. You can see like it's starting to scream a little bit.
I think it's really, really fresh. Awesome. I'm not using these, so I'm just gonna get rid of them. And then I have the same thing happening with the cutoff with the solids. I'm just gonna do that again. So it's just finding that balance, you know, and normally you have to close over the cutoff. Oh, let's put this back to zero. You have to close over the cutoff and then you send the signal. So it's open just where you want it. That's too much. And that works perfectly with the mod wheel now. So that's how I want it when it's closed. And that's fully open with the mod wheel. And then I actually don't have to play with the cutoff at all. I can just use my mod wheel. I can also automate my, my mod wheel inside Cubase. And that's basically it. And in the mix, I mean, with together with the saw lead. I mean, yeah. These are your basic building blocks to making hardstyle leads. And from here onwards, you can start to... Um, to layer things, uh, expand on these layers, and uh, build your own set of hardstyle leads. All right, guys. Well, I mean, I hope you learned something from this today. Um, I hope you learned how to build your own hardstyle lead, how to create it all in the box within Cubase. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to stack those leads, how to stack those layers to create really big sounding hardstyle leads. So take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy using Cubase. Peace.